Welcome back to the LinkedIn clone. In this video, we'll be working on the back end in Nest.js and we'll be implementing the friend request functionality for our front end. So we're going to have the ability to send requests, receive the requests and respond to the requests and also check the status of the request. So what I've done, if you look at the database here, is and I'll need to refresh it because I've just created uh, I've dro dropped everything and created it from scratch so if I just do a refresh here and I refresh the table I'll have to remove these but if I look at the user table here you can see that I've created five users John 2, 3, 4, 5 and John and then I've also have this connection table so if I go ahead and show that you can see that we have an ID and a status and there's also this creator ID and receive ID which are foreign keys back to the user table so what I'm going to do is just demonstrate what we're going to achieve today and I'm just going to log in as the first user and I'm going to copy the JSON web token and then I'm going to go ahead and paste that into the auth header. And I am going, since I'm logged in as the first user, if I send a request to the first user, I just say it's not possible to add yourself. And then I'm going to go ahead and add the second user. You see, you see who the creator is and the receiver and the status. So by default, it's going to be pending because it's waiting for approval from the other person. So I'm just going to go ahead and send a request to users two and three. Now I'm gonna go ahead and log in as user five. And I'm going to copy the JSON web token. And then I'm going to make a request back to user one and also to user four. And then I'm going to go and log back in with the original user. And I'll just copy that JSON web token into my buffer. So if we look at the Postgres database here and we refresh the connection table, we can see that we've made four connections. The first two are from the first user to the second and third users. And the third and fourth connection requests or friend requests are from the fifth user back to the first person and also to this fourth person here. So if we return back to Postman, we of course we're able to get the user by the user ID and that's how we, when we go to the user's page, we're able to um, show things like their name and stuff like that. Uh, but perhaps more interestingly, I interesting is to check the status. So, if I check the status of two, we get a pending. If I get a check the status of three, we get a pending. If I check the status of one, we get a 500 internal server error. And that's perfectly fine because we'll be dealing with error handling in a different video. And that's just to suggest that you are already logged in as the first user. So um, that should ideally be handled gracefully. But if we do have a look, when we're going to a user's page, we're gonna get the ID of that user that we're looking at. So see two, for example, or three. And then we're looking at their page based on their status, we'll show a button saying, okay, add or um, pending or something like that. We can also have a look at what happens if we enter the number five in here because we didn't actually make that request. So let's go ahead and do that. And we will get a internal server error. And I've just realized that I had the parameters the other way around where I was passing in the current user for the discovered user and the discovered user for the current user. So I'll switch those around and now if I look for user five, we can see where we want to, on the front end, 
we're going to be looking at user 5's profile for instance and they've sent us a request so since they've and since they've sent the request um, if we look at the number five we should actually indeed get the internal error um, so if you're logged in as user one and user five has made a request to you well when you're looking at their page it should look exactly the same so uh, that's fine but if you're the person that made the request uh, and you look at user two or three for instance then you should get the status and then you can view the uh, state accordingly uh, so sorry for I just got a little mixed up there uh, it was indeed correct um, so we're able to get the status of the particular connection uh, based on the user you're looking at if you want you can uh, make a post request and we've seen a uh, connection request we've seen that we also have the ability to view the receive requests so I'm logged in as user 1 here and we see that we get the receive request with an ID of 3 and a status of pending now this ID is different to the previous ID when we're getting this ID here, it was based on the user ID that we're looking at. However, for this case, we want to actually get the ID of the particular row that we're looking at. So we can see that for row three, we have the creator five, and they sent a request to this current user that I'm logged in as, as uh, the first user. So hence we get this, and if we had more, we'll just get more. Um, but we get the ID of three because that's what we want to use to update the particular, um, if you want to respond to a request. So right now, everything's pending but because we're logged in as user one, we can update the third row or the row with ID of three. And if we want to decline, then we can go ahead and just decline them like this. And then if we update the table, we can see that they have now been declined and on the front end, we could just, you know, disable or hide the button that allows them to send the request to that particular user. So, If you're wondering where we actually get this ID from, we, we're getting it from this request. So when we load up a page and you click on all of your requests that have been sent to you from someone else, you'll get that ID. And then you can, since you'll have that ID on the front end, you're able to use it and send it back in the uh, URL. So let's go ahead and get started working on that. So I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code and I'm in the API folder and in the source of the API folder we have this auth module here and within the auth module we have various models so we've got the user entity, user interface. So we're going to go ahead and since we're going to make a relation between the user entity and the new uh, friend request table we're going to open that up we're also going to go ahead and we're just going to copy this entity table just as a basis we'll paste that in here and we're just going to press F2 so we can rename the file and it will be dot entity so we'll keep that but we'll call this friend dash request entity so I'm changing the name from my example a little I feel like it's more appropriate after going through the demonstration and having the confusion of connection I know in LinkedIn they call it a connection but in the back end connection can refer to other things 
and I feel like it's an overloaded term so I, I've uh, gone back to this friend request idea so I'm just going to go ahead and cop, um, remove pretty much all these except for the primary generated ID and I'm not going to need these so I can get rid of that but what I will do is I'll just go ahead and I will rename the class to friend request entity so we've got our primary generated column now we're going to have a many to one relationship from the friend request side or a one to many relationship from the user entity side so if you've seen my previous video on when we set up the one to many for the feed post this should be familiar to you and actually I can go ahead and just copy this line down because we're going to have a one to many because every user can have many of these friend requests and they can also receive many of these friend requests so I'll start off by doing the sent connections or the sent request so rather than this feed post entity I'm just gonna go ahead and save this for now I'm going to have this friend request entity and I can just go ahead and copy that in here and I can copy the type here and I just do a control period to get that so we haven't actually specified what this is yet but I'm just going rather than author I'm going to call this creator to give it uh, some more specific meaning and there's a interdependence between these two files and it's um, a little it's slightly unintuitive but it if you just sort of replicate the steps it, it does uh, match to one another so basically in the user table you can say you want to um, one user can have many of these connections or many of these friend requests so for the friend request entity we take the creator which isn't created just yet but we will get there and we can say that we want the sent connections or sent friend request so we'll call that sent friend request and that's going to point to an array of friend request so this actually like this won't actually be in the user table but it's referencing the user table and in particular the ID of the user table and it's a foreign key and this is going to be a foreign key for both the creator ID and the receiver ID so I can actually go ahead and I can copy this down once more and I can also do the receiver and because it's a foreign key based on the ID of the user table by default it's going to add the ID suffix to the end of it as you see in the Postgres database table so rather than sent friend request this is going to be received friend request and we have to do the other side in our friend request entity so it's just representing what the table is looking like and it's providing us some magic methods with type on so basically we want we could just copy the feed post for the many side of things so if we go into the feed section in the module there we look at the models 
we can actually go ahead and get the entity so we can copy the many to one relationship and then just close the file up. So I'll just go ahead and I will import that. Now we're not going to need a one to many. So I'll get rid of that. We will use a column. But basically now we, well it's already mapping to the user entity. But rather than this feed post here, what I want to map to for this first one is the sent friend request. And then for the creator, we'll put that down here like that. And it will be a user entity. But we will need to import that. So we've got our user entity, so that all looks good. Now we'll just copy that down again. But rather for sent friend requests, we're going to have receive friend requests. And rather than receiver, our creator will have receiver here. We'll save that and we'll save that. So to check that your one to many relation is um, working, the one side it won't have the column in its table, so the user won't have a um, extra column there. But it will be the ID of the user table will be referenced as a foreign key uh, for each of these one to many relations if that's what you've specified it on. And to check that you've done this correctly, there's sort of this mirroring where if you're looking in the friend request entity, so the, the user entity that's defining the one-to-many relationship, it references the other entity first and then the field of that entity. And then the field or the property creator, this is the field defined here. So it's like a symmetry to it where what's on the top here is on the bottom here. And likewise, this is defined here for the use entity, pointing back to the use entity. And then the sent friends request property is uh, defined here. Ah, sorry, here on the below. And likewise for the second um, entity uh, property column. So all we need to do is we just need to add a regular column. So at column, and we can just say status. And we want our own type for status. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an interface here. And I'm just going to put it right in here. So I'll copy this user interface. And I'll put it here in the models. And I'll just go ahead and I'll rename that, or you could press F2 for the keyboard shortcut. And I'm going to call this friend request. So I can pretty much get rid of everything except for ID. And I'm going to get rid of these imports as well although we will need the use import. But before I do that, I might go ahead and just define a type here. So I'm going to export the type friend request status, because this is gonna be used by our friend request type or interface. So as you've seen earlier, there's pending. There's also accepted and there's also declined. So there are three options that we'll be using for our connection request status or a friend request status. So, and sometimes we actually just want to return that by itself. So I'm just going to have this interface here. So I'm just going to call it the same thing more or less, but I'm going to remove the underscore. And it's just going to be an object because we want a JSON object back to the user 
on the front end and it's just going to refer to the type that we just created. So with that, we're able to create our friend request interface, which is what we want. And our friend request interface, it's going to consist of the unique ID. It's going to have the creator. And this is going to be a user. And we've already set this up in the previous videos. So I'm going to copy this down. And I'm just going to get the receiver of the friend request. And I'm also going to get the status. And this is where I can refer to the type, the friend request status. And I can save that. And I can close the file and make use of that. So finally with that, we can go ahead and we can say, okay, the column is going to be the uh, friend request underscore status type. And we'll go ahead and make use of those other um, types and interfaces elsewhere in the application. So we've set up our database mapping uh, with type ORM. So we just have to recall that we need to add that to the module. So if we go to our auth module here, we can see that we've added this type or module for feature use entity. So that's just based on the name of that file of the class here. So we'll just go ahead and copy one in for the friend request entity. So you can just do a comma separated array here and you'll just need to import that. So that's our mapping from the data base or the data layer to uh, our application here. So we can actually go ahead and start to write some of the logic here. So let's go ahead and open up our user controller. We're going to open up our user controller and most of the work is going to be done in the service. So we'll also open our user service. And we can go ahead and we can just close the uh, entity files up now. So they should be all good. Oh, one thing I should note uh, before I close it up is the friend request entity. You do need to change the name here. And the name is what the uh, name of the table is going to be. So previously I called it connections, but I think I will call it requests and perhaps because it's a table it's implied that it's going to be have multiple records so I think a just a singular non plural request will do and then we'll go ahead and we'll just close up the file and then this is where we can actually do the work that we want to be doing So the very first thing we want to do is we want to be able to get a user. So we're going to go to a, another user's page and we just want to get some information about that user. So I'm just going to go ahead and just copy this get request here. And it's going to, we'll call it get and we'll just go ahead because we're already in the user controller. So it will be API slash user. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll just add on the dynamic uh, user ID here so we'll just add that there like that now this will just be find user by ID we won't be needing the request object we'll just need the request param so let's see if we have one of those okay I'll just type it out so if I get the param, and it's just going to be exactly as we defined here. Note the colon to make it dynamic. Now, I'm just going to return the user here. And we'll need to bring this in. Now if we take a look at the user service here, we actually already have a method that we've used previously, find user by ID. 
it just uses the user repository it finds by the ID and it also has the relation here so I can just go ahead and copy that method here now I'm no longer going to need the user ID like that because it's just going to be passed in directly from the URL so we know that this is going to be well it could be a string but we want to make it a number and to do that we need to define the name of the variable Oops. so control B is to hide and do that but I accidentally press that instead of the spacebar so user ID is a number we want a user observable back we can go ahead and we can return the user service find user by ID pass in the user ID and we will not need to do any of this additional piping in fact that's all we need to do here so we can go ahead and we can save that now let's just go ahead and start our API so we can do npm run start dev just to make sure because we made some changes on the database layer and everything and actually before I even do that I'm just going to go ahead and go to the database and just drop my tables here so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, where is it drop and I'm just dropping because we've added these uh, extra tables but we've also I was We've also um, want to start clean because I've had this example here from before, which means we will need to recreate our users, but that's okay. So I'll just go ahead and drop that as well. So if I go ahead and run the server, just wait for that to map the URLs and we do actually get an error here this is an error I get often when I have another um, API going on a node API so I'll just shut that down and give it another go so I'm just gonna go ahead and just close these panels here and let's just check that we're able to create a person. So let's register John. And while we're here, we may as well get five of them. We're gonna to need to do it at some point just to check things are working, have enough users so we can have enough combinations of uh, adding friend requests, both from the creator and the receiver and also on a different account so let's just go ahead and do that and we can just log in as John the first user now I've just created this get user so let's say we get user 1 and we'll need to copy this new token in so I need to get that from here I'll just sign in again copy that token so we're logged in as the first user copy that in we also want to get the first user or get the second user so we can see that that's working fine so that's cool got a, our first simple controller method here now we can actually start to work on the logic of sending a request so let's go ahead and just copy this simple control method down a little we will have our JWT guard on all of these so we will actually be doing a post method here so we can say that we're in the user so I'm going to send this to previously I had this as connection request but I think it's a little less confusing if we call it friend request and if I get confused between friend requests and connection requests, uh, 
you know, I'm sure you'll be able to follow along. It's just because I've coded on my other screen here the connection request. Uh, but I thought it makes more sense to change it. So, what we're going to have here though is another dynamic value here. So, when we send a connection request, we're going to be logged in as our user, but we are the creator, but we want to send it to a receiver. So, consider that we're on someone else's page, we want to send a request to them. Well, we can get their user number. So, based on their user ID <coughs> of the page that we're on, that's who we want to send our request to. So, we can just go ahead and have that parameter there receive ID. And we can just go ahead and rename this to send connection request. And rather than this user ID, I'm going to have a receiver ID, although a user ID uh, would suffice because it technically is a user's ID, but this receiver ID is a little more descriptive. Um, so we're getting the ID and we're getting it from the URL. So this has the potential to, this is going to be a string basically. Receiver string ID of the type string. And I should do this for the above method as well. So what we're expecting here is we're expecting a connection request to come back. So we've defined that. Um, and once again, it's a friend request. So we can get that interface here. We can just look at that F12 if we want to look back at that. And we can just go Alt left to go back. So we can just close that up. Um, but we could get an error. Um, so we can also have an observe will come back of an error. And that's if, if it's the same user or something like that. Uh, so we just say string. Um, so basically, what I want to do here is I just want to create, I just want to coerce the type of the receiver ID. And we can do that by, so this receiver ID here, this is a new variable because we've renamed the receiver ID param to receive a string ID and I've done that so I could use this pass int method because it's going to pass the string to an integer. And this is just to, you know, be a little safer, obviously. It's not going to handle strings and all that very well, but I don't want to focus on the complete error handling in this video. We'll end up doing that uh, in another video. Um, but just to make things a little less uh, likely to break, we can go ahead and use that instead. And I might just go ahead and copy this same sort of thing for this other method here. So. This is just going to be user string ID. It's going to be a string. It could be a string. Because um, when you get anything from a URL, it's going to be a string, even if it is a number. And, it's, you know, if you have the word number there, you can just coerce it anyway, but just uh, for additional safety, we'll just go ahead and we'll just call this user ID like that. So we should be able to save that and we can just check that that's still working all fine. So we go to our API here and it works just fine. And it works better actually. So I am going to have a different service method here and I haven't actually created it just yet, but we will create it. So basically, we want a method here called send friend request. Send connection request. So send friend request. Now, what this is going to take is imagine we're on the page. Well, what we can do is we can say we can get the ID of the user, so we can have the receiver ID, which is just a number. And we can also have the creator, since we're using the JWT guard, we're logged in as the user. 
uh, we're able to use that user, which is going to be a foreign key in the friend request table. And what this is going to return for us, it's going to be an observable and it's going to be the exact same type as we defined here. So I can just copy this here. Now we just need to import friend request. So we get the interface for that and open up our code block. It's just erring because we're not returning anything just yet. One thing we want to do is we just want to check that we aren't the user. So we can't send a request to ourselves. I'm not going to handle all of the edge cases, but a couple of low hanging fruit ones, may as well get them. So if this is the case here where the receiver ID or the ID that we're getting from the page that we're on, or the user's page that we're looking at, if that's equal to our JSON web token uh, validated ID of our creator what we want to do is we just want to return and we need to return an observable so we wrap it in this of operator and it's going to be of the type error and I'm just going to say it is not possible to add yourself so now that that condition is taken care of here we can go ahead, we can continue working on our logic. So basically we want to return an observable of the connection request type. So we don't actually know what the receiver is. We know the ID of the receiver, but we actually need to get the actual user because that's what's mapped in our table. So what we can do here is we can just say we can return, and we already have a method, we used it before, use find user by ID, and we pass in our receiver ID, and that means we can use the pipe, and we can use the switch map operator, and this we'll be using the switch map operator a lot in this to change the observable from one observable into a different type of observable but using the information from the first observable so if you're not uh, comfortable with switch map I think the time this video is done and through you'll be able to understand quite well uh, if you need a basic understanding of switch map I recommend you check out the RxJS uh, switch map documentation just basic observable switch map it's a very very common pattern uh, must know so we know that we're going to get a receiver, we're going to get a user back and we'll give it the name receiver to give it um, a more semantic meaning. And it's going to be of a type user here. So a switch map, it takes the first observable and expects another observable to be returned. So what we want to do here is we actually want to return some sort of observable and we don't actually have it just yet because what we want to return here is well we want to do a few small switch maps but basically we want to determine if the um, request has been sent or received already so you send a request to someone but if it's already been sent, already been received, then in that case, well, we don't want to send another request. So let's go ahead and create that. So let's say here, has request been sent or received? And we're going to need to know the creator, which is a user, and a receiver, which is also a user. And what we would expect back is an observable of the Boolean type, because it's going to do an asynchronous operation here. 
Now, what we can return here is a observable. So we're going to use a the connection or the friend request repository that we've created. So that means up the top of the file here, we can just go ahead and copy this down. Just put a. Um, this is going to be based on the friend request entity. So we can get that. And then we can copy that here as well. And then we can assign it the variable friend request. And it's read only. Friend request repository. So this is how we're going to connect to our database. We've got the table set up and with this repository injected, we're able to use type ORM to connect to that and make operations. So that means here to, and that returns a promise by default when you access that repository. So we're just going to wrap it in this from might need to import that as well. We should actually have it. Um, so from this dot friend request repository, what we can do is we can just say, well, we want to use the find one method. So what do we want to do here? Well, we're going to find it based on some options. So this is essentially like a where clause. So What we want to do here is we, we've got two conditions here. We want to determine if a request has been sent or received. So if it's been sent, it means the creator that's passed in is just going to be the creator and the receiver is going to be the receiver. But let's say we've received the invitation from someone else. Well we want to check for that case as well. So it could be that, well, it, the creator is the receiver and the receiver is the creator. And it might seem a little confusing. It's just because we've named the columns creator and receiver. Um, you can imagine if I open this Postgres database up again and I refresh things here and we have a look at our request table view all rows let's say I'm logged in as user 1 user 1 sends a request to user 2 well then that case the creator ID is going to be equal to the user and the receiver is the receiver however the more confusing part is if you didn't send the request someone else sent the request but you're logged in as the original person so I say I'm logged in as person one but the creator was person two here and they sent it to me well in that case I am not the creator but I'm logged in so we'll need to switch the values over so that means I can just use this where column ah uh, sorry array and I'm going to check for two different conditions. So the creator is the creator and the receiver is the receiver. That's one case. Or the creator is the receiver and the receiver is the creator. That just checks it both ways. So we're still, this is going to return a, um, you know, a friend request. So we need to use the switch map operator again. So to be able to do that, we need to come to the end of this from here. And then we can just pipe onto that. And then we can use the switch map operator. And we know that we're going to get a friend request here of the type friend request. So with that, firstly, what we can do here is we can just say, well, if 
there is no friend request you know it's all good so we can return the observable false otherwise we can just return the true observable and we just need to bring that in from RxJS actually surprised it wasn't already there so I'm just going to check okay so I think because there was an error below maybe it didn't import it or something like that um, so we're still working on we, we need to determine the well the bigger picture here is we need to send a friend request but before we do that we need to check if a request has been sent or received now this will get a record to see if a request has been sent or received and if it hasn't been created it will just return false so the has request been sent or received will be false otherwise it will be true so we're able to make use of that method in our send friend request method so let's go back to our send friend request method So what we've done here is we just check that the creator isn't the receiver and then we've needed to get the receiver like the actual user from the ID that's been passed in and with that this is where we can check to see whether or not the request has been sent so we can just say this dot has request been sent or received now this takes in the creator and the receiver as specified in the uh, arguments here in the signature so just it's important to make sure you get them the right way on so what I'll do is we know that this is going to return a boolean um, but I actually want to return a friend request so once again I'm going to need to pipe into that and change that observable using the switch map pipeable operator and this essentially is it's going to be a boolean so what we can do is we can just check if that's true so if it has been sent and this is why we've got this error case here so if that has been sent we can just return a message to the user just to say a connection or a friend request has already been sent or received to your account and of course you can put whatever you want here so this will get returned if has request been sent or received is true so something a request exists between the two parties or the two users so if it makes it past that if check we can just go ahead and we can say let friend request so we're going to make a friend request object here and what we'll do is we'll just pass in the creator pass in the receiver and we'll pass in the status because when you make the request by default it's going to be pending and now that we've created that friend request we can say well we can access the friend request repository and convert it to an observable and then we can just go ahead and we can save it and we can save it that friend request So that's more or less everything we need to be able to send the friend request. Now we, all we need to do is just use it. So let's return back to our controller. Now we see that we've, for the friend request uh, slash send, 
for whatever the receiver ID is, we take that parameter, we pass it to an integer, and then for the user service, this is where we're able to call our send friend request method. This is going to take in the receiver ID, and since we're using the JWT, we're able to access the request um, object. So we can just go ahead and get the attached JWT or uh, the user that's been attached to the request. So we can just say, as the second argument, the creator, we can just get the request and we can get the user directly from the request. So now I'm just going to go ahead and copy this endpoint here, or part of it. I'm going to try and make a request. So right now if we take a look at users, we see we've got five users and we've got an empty table here. So I'm logged in as user one if my JSON web token is still valid. So I'm going to just try make a request. So I believe connection request is now changed to friend request. So I'm logged in as user one. So let's see what happens if I send a request to user one. Okay, unauthorized. Let's just get the JSON web token again. Copy this in. Put the bearer token as auth header. And let's go ahead and make the request now. So it's not possible to add yourself, that's awesome. Let's add number two, get the response with both the users, the creator and the receiver. And I'll just add three as well. So we can see the operations uh, coming up, uh, they're working correctly. So we see that creator one created a connection or a friend request to user two and user three. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to log in as user five. Make sure to copy the JSON web token, otherwise we'll think you're logged into user one. Get that here. I'm going to make a request back to one and also to four and then I'm going to log back into John, the first dude. So now we see we've got the five to one, five to four. So now that we have the ability to send friend requests, we'd want to actually be able to, um, well, we want to do a few things. When we go to a user's page, we want to get the status of the user request, so if it's pending, you know, show a pending button. If it's not sent at all, show a connect or a send request button. Um, and if it's declined or accepted, uh, <coughs> I think they just hide the button or disable it or something like that. So let's go ahead and just make it possible to be able to get the status um, based on the receiver's ID. So you're looking at a particular user's page. Their pay, like the user, you're gonna have access to that on the front end, like what the ID of the user is. So we want to be able to get the status based on that value. So I'm just gonna go ahead and copy this get request here. Copy this down. Now I'm going to have friend request. Actually, I'll just copy this whole thing here. Friend request, and rather than send, I'm going to get the status of the friend request. And we can have the receiver ID, ID here again. That's okay. But we will need to change the name of this method here. So I'm just going to call it get um, friend request status 
Now we're going to have the receiver ID and we're going to have the receiver string ID. We're going to pass that in so we can get our receiver ID. So what we would expect back here is we don't want the user coming back. We actually want the connection request status. So this, or the friend request status. So if we just open this up, the friend request status is just a JSON object that says the status and then the status is either going to be pending, accepted or declined. So we've got the receiver ID, we've got the user service. Now we want to create a method called get friend request status. And we're going to pass in the receiver ID. And we also want the uh, user. So we can just go ahead and get that rec.user and of course we're just going to need to add that in here so I'll add that now get friend request status doesn't exist just yet so let's go ahead and create it so get friend request status so we're going to have the receiver ID um, so whoever's profile we're looking at is the receiver ID so what we can do here we can just say okay I think the receiver ID it's going to be a number and we also have the current user so I'm just going to call this current user just to distinguish because um, we've got different types of users. If you just use the word user, it might be a little confusing. Um, it might be okay, it's just personal preference. Um, but what we want here, this is going to be the same return type. So the friend request status and then we can just go ahead and open our code block here. So we want to return an observable here. Once again, we've got the ID of the receiver. So we're going to have to do something like this, where we find the user by ID based on the receiver ID. And then we pipe into that and we get the receiver, the user back based on their ID. And then we're able to return our own observable. So from, and we can use the, connect, uh, the friend request repository. We can go ahead and we can find one. Now this time we're going to have the creator which is the current user and we're also going to have the receiver which is the receiver so we can just leave it like that if we want so that means we're getting a friend request back but we actually want the status back so where this pipe ends here, oh, not where the pipe ends, where the return from ends, and I've got bracket, uh, so I'll just save this, because I've got prettier to help the formatting a little. But where this bracket is here, uh, actually what we'll do is we'll just make another switch map here. So just below this switch map here, we can have another switch map, nothing preventing us from doing that, which will take the result from this section here. So 
we know that we're going to get a friend request back of the type friend request. So with that, we can actually get the status. And we can just go ahead and return the um, Well, we can just say the status is going to be the friend request status. So we save this here. And this is actually this one. Actually, let's check that out. So, if I friend request status, do I spell it wrong? Friend request status. Oh, I think I just didn't import it, so let's just import that. So, now we're able to get the friend request status based on the ID, so of the person you're looking for and your own ID. So that means we're able to just use that now. So if we return to our controller, we see that we pass in the receive ID and the request user. So we can just actually make this now. So what are we trying to look for here? What we're trying to look for is when we make the request to the receive ID, it implies that we're logged in as a user on the front end and we're looking to see uh, what the status is uh, of our uh, current uh, you know the request status of the friendship so I'm logged in as user one we've seen how to make requests we want to see how we can get a request. So let's just look at the database here. We, we're user one, so let's look for the status of user two. Unauthorized. Let's get the token. And we can see we've got pending here. Okay, that's awesome. And let's just check for three as well. All right, awesome. Now, we need the ability to change the status. So we're going to need to make a put method. So let's just go ahead and copy this down. We'll change the get method to a put method. We'll call it friend request response. And we'll call this receiver ID or uh, friend request ID. So we'll use that friend request and we'll have to import put. I don't think we've used it yet in this file. So this param will be friend request ID. We'll have friend request string ID that we're passing in here. And we're just checking that that is a valid number. We have the request. So we'll just call this method something appropriate. We'll call it respond to friend request and what we want back is the actual friend request so we'll have a method here we'll call it respond to friend request on the service we're also going to need to put in the status. So actually, 
rather than having this request at all, what we'll do is in the body, we'll have the status response. And we know this is going to be of the type friend request status. So if we look at that, just the object status and the status type. Just close that up. So we actually want to um, pass this, but let's just rename it. So let's see here. So the friend request ID, that's what we're getting from the URL. Um, but the status response, this is going to have a status inside of it, as you've seen by the object notation. So we can do something like this. And it's just erring because we haven't actually created this method yet. So let's just go ahead and create it. So respond to friend request. We're going to take in the status request, and I might change these variables around. Um, just personal preference, no real reason. I just like to have the like we're changing the status. That's the variable of interest, but we're all and it seems the most important variables I like to put first. But obviously. Uh, it's hard to rank them since you need both of them here. You need the ID as well. Doesn't really matter. It's up to you. But I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, the status response. This is the friend request status. And the friend request ID. this is going to be a number and of course what we want back is going to be of a consistent type as defined in the controller so let's just go ahead and grab that friend request status type and then now we can open our code block and write our logic out so we need to return and what we need to do is we need to get the um, we need to get the user friend request by ID. Let's create that. So I'm going to call this get. user I'll get friend request user by ID You're going to need the friend request ID for this and we know this is going to be a number What this is going to return is an observable. Of the friend request type. Get friend request user by ID. This could be get user by ID. Um, but we have something similar to that. Oh, we got find user by ID, and I. When you're finding a user by ID, it's going to have this relationship here, and it's going to do some other things related to the user repository. So, this is why I've taken some time into thinking about the name. Get friend request user by ID makes it more specific to the friend uh, portion of this. Probably would even want to separate into different files and services and stuff like that. Um, but you know <coughs> it's all good so 
get friend request user by ID. This is going to be quite simple actually. All we're going to do is we're just going to access the friend request repository, find one, and put in our filtering. So where the ID is equal to the friend request ID. So the bigger picture here, we want to respond to a friend request based on the ID. I'm logged in as user one, and if I was trying to re um, respond to users three's friend request, this would be a three here. And based on that, um, well, we need to have some more. We need to know what the friend request uh, object looks like for that particular ID. So we're able to use our repository find one method and use the filtering on the ID for the friend request ID to get that back. So with that, that means we're able to return this dot get friend request user by ID. And we can just go ahead and put in our friend request ID. So we're able to pipe, use the switch map operator, and for that friend request of the type friend request, we're able to use that and return another observable. And we're going to once again use the friend repository. So we wrap the promise in an observable using the from observable maker. And we can say for the friend request repository, we can do save, save post, but it also updates. So that means we can just go ahead and we can take everything from the friend request. So that's why we needed the friend request because we needed everything to be the same in the row um, for that particular ID that we're looking for. But we just want to change the status. And that's just going to be changed to the status response here. So we're now able to respond to friend requests. friend request ID so if we save that now this should be able to work so I'm just going to go ahead and copy this part of the URL here go to postman now we haven't got the receive request just yet but we'll come back to that. Now we have the ability to, so let's just say that we're logged in as user one, copy that token here, put it in the headers, in, oh, in the authorization, in the bearer token. And if I look at the body here, I'm in raw JSON. Right now, if we look at the database here, refresh it, we see, because I'm logged in as user one, you will see the receiver ID uh, is three. Make the request, and it says for the ID of three, the status is declined. So if I refresh this, you can see that this has now been declined. And I'm sorry I made a same mistake as at the beginning of the video where I should actually be referring to the uh, ID. So 
sorry for it. I apologize for any confusion that arose between the that. So let me go over that again to clear things up. The friend request ID, and this is why I renamed it to friend request ID, is the ID of the friend request. So that logically all makes sense. So what I really wanted to do was say for user two here, uh, for the second friend request, I need to get the ID, which is two, and then change that, and then send that to decline. So I'm gonna change this to accepted, just to demonstrate. So this is gonna be to two. So now it has, if I refresh the table, we see accepted. And the reason I got sort of confused between the numbers is, um, you might be thinking, well, how do you get that ID? How do you get the ID of the friend request? And I've actually got another method here that's going to do that for us. So let's work on that. So, and once you have that method, well, so what we're gonna do is, when you're on the front end, when you're in your LinkedIn application, there's going to, when you click on the friends button, you can see all of your received requests and all your received requests will also contain that ID. So that's how we're gonna have access to that friend request ID to be able to make those calls. So we only need one more method here and we can just copy this get method here what we can do is we can say friend request and I'm just gonna put me here for received request and this is actually not a variable. So you hit that MPI point, API slash user slash friend request slash me slash receive request. I'm going to call this get friend request from recipients get friend request from recipients so I'm going to have I actually won't even need a this because I've got the request um, with the user associated with it and that means based on the user I should be able to um, find the like who sent the request so who sent request to me well if we look at the database we can see that I've made a request to one I made request to uh, one to two one to three but when I log on to LinkedIn, I don't want to see the request that I made. I want to see requests that other people made. So I want to see five come back. So if I go to Visual Studio Code, well, all I need to do is pass in the, well, I'll change this to get friend request from recipients, give it the same name, and then just pass in the user here. I'm just gonna go ahead and save that, or error, because we haven't made this method yet, so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make that and technically this is going to be giving back an array because you could have more than one request so I need to make that an array now if I create this method here get friend request from recipients We can see that for the current user, which is of the type user, what we would expect to come back here is a friend request. And we can just say, well, we can use our repository. So we can say return and then convert to a promise. I'll convert it from promise to an observable. And we can say for the friend 
ship repository, friend request repository. What we can do, we rather than finding one, we can find all with the find method. And what we want to find it based on is where we have the case that the receiver I just realized this should be not have this here. This should be here. So we want the receiver to be equal to the current user. And that's it. So what happened there? We want to see who made requests to us. So we want to see this third request here that's already been declined but um, you know they'll be handled on the front end so because technically the once the request is made it's always open so once the request is sent it's either in the state of pending accepted or declined and it will always exist as a record so essentially when we want to see that receive requests, so request between the two parties, between the logged in user and someone else, we essentially look where the receiver table is equal to the current user. Because if you think about it, when five made a request to one, user one, that uh, user is now in the receiver section. So, when the receiver is equal to the current user, that's how we're able to find all of the requests that have been sent to that. And if there was more than one, you'd get more back. Uh, since there's only one, we would only expect one back. So let's see that. So let's just copy this friend request part here. And let's just go to our get method here. Slash user, slash friend request, slash me, slash receive requests. And I'm logged in as user one, and I get an unauthorized. But if I copy this JSON web token, and I copy this over to the get method. Now if I get, we see we get uh, the ID of three back and also the status of decline. Now you might be thinking you get a five back, but this is actually the ID of the row. So if we look at the row here, we see that for this uh, receiver of one, for this creator of five, the row is three. So that's what we're using. So we're able to get that value. And then if we want to change it from, well, Ideally, you wouldn't be able to change it from decline to accepted, but um, it's not going to be an exhaustive uh, handle every single case. Otherwise, I'll end up building LinkedIn. Um, if I change the, so we got the ID of three, and let's send it back to pending. And now, if we have a look at the table here, this is now pending. So we've now worked on and created all of the functionality on the back end side of things to make friend requests, accept them, view them and get the status of them and so on. So I'll just quickly recap everything we've done here. We firstly, we created five table, uh, five users. We then created a friend request between user one and user two and three, and also logged in as four, um, user five and created a request to user one and user four. We've made it such that you can get the user. So when you go to the user's page, you're able to get their name and if they had more data, it would have more data there. We've also made it so you can send the request based on the logged in user. You can get the status of the request you can get the all of the receive requests and you can get the 
you can update the request. So I really hope you enjoyed that video on uh, friend requests. Uh, in the next video, we're going to work on implementing that on the front end. So please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.